Good morning. Good morning. Today is the day um, that we actually go through the Panama Canal. So, um, do you want to talk a little bit about what the canal is? The Panama Canal. It's a man-made stair step. Yeah, elevator. elevator. It's a water elevator. So there's four sets of man-made locks and a great big lake in, in the, the middle. middle. And so we're going through the new set of the larger locks this time. The Wonder and her recent refit dry dock um, has become too big to go through small locks. So no, the original yeah, the original locks. So we have to go through the big locks this time. It is currently 6.30 in the morning and there is a huge crowd of people up on the very front top deck as we approach that first set of locks yeah we're not there yet there's a container ship inside the first set of locks already so we kind of have to wait our turn but the sun is coming up you can see the city off to the east of us mm -hmm. we have and our tugboats tugs on this side us. yep the tugboats will travel with us through the locks because they're going to act as our brake and they're gonna kind of keep us away from the side of the lock. The big container ships, they don't really want them rubbing on the side of the locks because they don't want them to damage the lock, but they're, they're being kind to us to be the bumper so that we they don't They wanna keep rubbed. our ship pretty is why they wanna you know, protect us and our ship. If I'm not mistaken, we've already picked up our pilot, which is the ship pilot who will navigate us through the locks. They will be with us all day long. We are supposed to schedule to enter the locks this morning at 6.45 a.m. and exit the locks this morning at 9.15 a.m. So it's gonna take us some time to get through the first set of locks this morning into the lake. And then I think we traverse the lake all day long and it's gonna take us into, I think until, what what they say, three or four o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah. It's actually really, really nice weather for this. On other times that I've done this, it's been really, really very, very hot. It's humid, but it's not quite so hot yet. But it can also rain. They get almost 200 inches of rain. Yeah, in it does months, rain months. quite a bit. And that's how the locks work, is they run off of the rain water. It does take a ton of water to put all these ships through. My plan is to kind of take you around the ship throughout the day. We're not going to set up a GoPro. Um, we were in the bar last night and there was a guy complaining loudly about people who set up GoPros. He, and he basically said, who wants to watch nine hours of footage? And so I kind of feel the same way. I'm just going to show you our experience of going through the locks. I'm not here. I'm not a professional. I'm just here to show you my experience of the day the ship goes through the locks. Because I think that's more interesting. And some of the engineering marvel that goes into it. Yeah. On a funnel vision, they have what's called the bridge view camera. So up here you can see that they are playing video, live stream video from the bridge of the ship. And this is what you can see from the front of the ship, except without the crowd of people. So they're playing this on funnel vision for all the people around and I know it looks like there aren't any but it is really really early in the morning. It is really a nice morning. It is so pretty. Starting with some breakfast, I have scrambled eggs, a sausage, some banana bread, I already ate my yogurt, and some plain old regular coffee that's not very good. We'll get some better coffee soon. Mom's got a whole big plate of yummy looking goodness. So this Holland America ship over here is actually going to go through the old locks, which means that this ship over here is smaller than either shorter narrower or both than the Disney Wonder. So it's gonna go through the other set of locks. And you can see we're kind of getting lined up. Up ahead of us you can see that the container ship has already entered the second lock. We are going into the first one. And our friend is going away.
this right here is the rolling gate that will roll across behind us to keep the water in. And the water from these reservoirs will come into our channel and lift our ship up to the level of the container ship. Ahead of us you can see the container ship has moved into the final lock and the gate is rolling across. So the gate is still closed for us and when we get in completely one of these will roll across. Now there are two, it's like a built-in backup system. On the bridge view, if you look down in the bottom corner of the screen up here, you can see the crew deck. So those are all like cast and crew and they're taking pictures. It's neat that they get to celebrate too. And up here ahead of us, this is the lock we're entering. And you can see the cargo ship way up there. Of course, it's not a great picture because it's a picture of a picture, but it's the best I can do right now. One of the things that's really special about Panama Canal Day is there's cast and crew that walk around and push coffee carts. Some of them have like breakfast pastries, right? Yep. Which is really handy because if you want to be out and about walking around the ship, you don't really want to go to Cabanas. Now we got lucky this morning and we got a table outside, but they do, like there's another one over there. They do really take care of you on this cruise because they want to be out and about too because they want to see everything also. We're in deck three now inside because we cannot go out to deck four. We went, we got some special coffee at Cove Cafe. What did you learn? Deck four is closed all day. Every exit means. We can't go outside on deck four at all. Correct. Did they say why? I don't remember that from years past. Okay. Odd. So now we're playing the waiting game, waiting for the ship to go in and up and in and up and in and up and in, right? Because right. we go into the first lock and up to the level of the second lock and into the second lock and up to the level of the third lock and into the third lock and up to the level of the lake and then into the lake, Lake Gatun, I think is what it's called. And then we kind of sail through the lake. Now I think the reason it takes us all day is because there's a no wake zone for the entire lake. So we have to go really, really, really slow, which is fine. Gives us lots of time to look off the ship into the jungle for monkeys. The narrator made the comment. Just now? Just a few minutes ago that the old locks where the New Holland, was it New Holland? Yeah, Hol Ho I think it's Holland Lines. Holland, yeah. Where that ship went through the old locks that it takes 52,000 gallons of water. of water for the crossing and it takes 7% of that to use the new locks. And of course the new locks are much bigger, but because of the water conservation method that they use, it takes so much less water. That's one of the reasons they like to use the new, the locks. new locks, because the old locks are completely driven, the elevator's completely driven by Lake Pond's water level, which is all rainwater. Right. And once that, water level lets you out into the ocean, they lose all that water yeah. that, that carried that ship through the water elevator and the old locks, and they conserve that water in the great big tanks. Now, I don't think we've seen it, but the water flows back and forth from the water elevator into the tank to take the water level down, or from the tank back into the water elevator to raise the ship up. Yeah, the water in the reservoir over there, there's these three reservoirs over here, and the water in the far one, the level has gone down. Of course, you can't see that because the windows are dirty, but that's kind of how it works is they use water and save water, recycle it. They recycle water. They recycle the water for the new locks. Right now we are in the second lock and the gate is opening for us to move into the third lock. Very cool. And just to give you a timestamp, it is currently 8.12 in the morning. 
So we've been at this about, what, an hour and a half, I think? Yep, and we're slowly moving forward. Yeah, they just opened the gate to the third lock. Yeah, yeah you can see that. Yep. Now we are passing the control tower. This is a great big building. That is so cool. We're in the third lock and our gate is opening. So we're gonna be able to enter the lake as soon as that gate opens and we're clear. So this ship over here is the Holland America ship that we saw coming under the bridge earlier this morning. And it looks like it's going to go through another lock right over here because this ship is doing the older, smaller locks. On the other side of the ship now, and you can see just jungle right over here. I don't have my binoculars with me, I left them downstairs, but I'm sure I could see monkeys from here if I had my binoculars. And way up there you can see the Bridge of the Americas. And way back that way, you can see the direction we came from. All the locks and the bridge we sailed underneath this morning. So mom has borrowed the Captain Puckett book from one of the friends that we're sailing with and he was a former Panama Canal ship pilot. He used to do um, lectures on the Disney Panama Canal sailings and he's not on this sailing so we've got the next best thing which is his book. And I've talked about the locks being sort of like a water elevator because we kind of have to go up and up in and up and in to the Gatun Lake. And the reason for that is because the lake, which existed before the locks, is actually 85 feet or 26 meters above sea level. So we kind of have to go up, up, up and in. And when we go over, actually, this is where we came from. We came in the Miraflores locks. And we'll go out over here because we came in from the Pacific. But anyway, you go up and into the lake and then across the canal and out. So we're over here and we're going to sail all the way across and then go out into the Atlantic Ocean. From the bridge camera, you can see we are approaching the Bridge of the Americas. And there's all kinds of traffic on it. And it's beautiful. It's very pretty.
just had a update from our cruise director, Trent. He came over the intercom. So we received this text message from guest services. We, this morning, received, or I guess that was late last night, we received a text telling us the times for today, and now we have updated times. So we've been bumped up from 4 p.m. to 1 p.m. Cool. We got another update. So instead of 4 p.m. up here, and 1 p.m. here, now it says 12 p.m. exiting the locks at 2.30 p.m. So we've been bumped up again. Yeah. He's ready. He's he is ready. Yay. He's gonna make us something fun. yummy. So you can come back here to refill. You just bring your empty pineapple. And then whenever you come back here today, I'm gonna start here the latest time 4 o'clock. We just charge for the next one, the ram only, okay? Just bring the empty pineapple, and then we just charge for the ram only for the next one, okay? Nice one! Now, So this is a really super special experience because they core these pineapples to make the drinks, right? So they save the fruit. And then this morning there was a guy walking around with pineapple juice and she's got some too. And I I can only assume that the juice came from these fresh pineapples, right? Correct. Because it's so fresh and very sweet. But we've got a piña colada with banana, so they call it a banana caribe on the ship, and then fresh pineapple, and then pineapple juice. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Very nice. For lunch today, I got pizza, and it's the sweet pear with onion, and the chili con carne. And this one looks like it has jalapenos on it. I bet that one's yummy. It is 11.45, and you can see rain all the way over there. We're supposed to be going through the next set of locks, the second set of locks, in about 15 minutes. We can't see them yet, but it is so beautiful and so peaceful. And this is off the back of the ship. We were just passed by that cargo ship over there. So that's the direction we came from. It looks like the rain is following us because it is very rainy over there. It's very peaceful back here. There's no loud music playing, no people talking. It's so beautiful. So mom remembers Panama Canal Day being barbecue day in Cabanas, but this time they had a Panamanian corner as their special of the day. They had things like ceviche and salads and this is a chicken lime cilantro salad. They also had some beef empanadas, which I got two, and some rice. They had a lot of really yummy smelling things and I had pizza but I'm kind of still hungry, and she hasn't eaten yet, so. Is it yummy? That's yummy. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit. I'm gonna try not to show mom as she's eating, because I think that's weird. Um, but I wanna talk about this food for a minute, because this food has been fantastic. These beef empanadas have huge chunks of beef in them, and they're sort of spicy. The rice is really flavorful, and the chicken lime salad is very good. Now we're getting a new announcement. Well, it is 12.30, and you can see from the screen, we are not in the first lock yet, but the cargo ship that we followed through the locks this morning is going through the locks and heading out, so we're close. It's 12.41, and it looks like we're going into the first lock, and we've got a staff meeting over here because I think we're getting ready for the swim through the Panama Canal experience at 1 o'clock. And the Goofy Pool, right over here. Our tugboats 
are leaving us or repositioning themselves. And over here is the visitor's pavilion. We then control the entire operation of the global water and social vessels moving. We are entering the first lock now. May I have your attention, please? This is the officer of the watch speaking from the bridge. When we come to this announcement, we will be sounding our ship's whistle. And over here you can see all the people starting to line up for the swim through the Panama Canal experience. Sometimes this line wraps all the way around the deck and it, even into the adult area, it can get really long. Mom and I just finished the swim through the Panama Canal experience and now we're sailing past the Aguaclara Locks Tower. control tower. For the swimming experience, they have you all line up, they take your stateroom number, you wait in line, and then they put you in the pool, you swim across, and under here they've got towels, and then you're done. And I think we're supposed to get a certificate later on. So we've come back to the room. We're basically through the locks. I think we've got one, maybe two left. I think just one lock left. Yeah. And then we're all the way through. It. What time is it? Two? It is 1.41. Okay, almost two o'clock. We came back to the room because we got wet in the pool when we did the swimming through the Panama Canal experience. So we got wet and we wanted to come change because we have a tequila and margarita tasting in Cadillac Lounge at two o'clock in 19 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we came and changed. I'm wearing a dress of all things and my brand new holiday Mickey sweatshirt that's so cute. I'm sorry, Holiday Captain Mickey. <laughs> it's I'm important. just regu wearing a regular Mickey shirt. Yeah, she's wearing the classic Mickey. So, thoughts on the day, Mom? Or on the canal experience? Because the day is not over. Well, I really enjoy the engineering marvel of the canal. Mm -hmm. I really missed... I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I, I enjoyed it, but our narrator was not very animated, and he didn't really provide a whole lot of information. It wasn't clear. Yeah. I'm um, sorry I interrupted you. No, that's alright. But your thoughts are very similar to mine. I really missed having Captain Puckett on the ship giving us lectures throughout the cruise leading up to this point. So I felt like the buildup didn't happen at all and then suddenly today we're in the canal and yay, it's here. But we don't we didn't learn anything on this cruise and all of the facts that we have learned on previous sailings just kind of seem vague or wrong or incorrect and so I don't wanna relay any of that information to you because I don't know how correct it is. Exactly. I'm sure that you can find that online, but it was kind of disappointing that they didn't have like even like I think a printout brochure would be cool. We used to get a map of the canal and it just was sort of no. La it, I would call it lackluster. Yeah. The canal experience itself, going through the locks itself was really really great. It's so cool. A lot of cruises will leave like out of Tampa or Port Canaveral or Galveston and they will do a Panama Canal cruise by sailing down to the canal into the canal and then back out through the same locks and then back to the previous port. But this is a repositioning cruise. Correct. So this one goes from San Diego through the canal. It's a one-way sailing all the way to Galveston. So they're repositioning the ship so it's kind of an exciting experience. You start in one place and you end in another. The crew is thrilled to be here for many of them it's, it's their first time yeah. yeah and for some it's you know one of many sailings that they've had but they're all just thrilled to be here and be mm -hmm. back on the ship with the guests and that's very apparent today again yeah so we're doing this sailing not exactly for the Panama Canal itself but for the 14 days on the ship for the crew and the cast the food the service the experience so I was just a little bit disappointed in the lack of lead up to the Panama Canal itself. But other than that, I had a great day today. Right. Yeah. I enjoy, I've enjoyed it. And our pineapple drink was really, really fun. Yeah. And then they handed out strawberry bars. Strawberry popsicles. Those, and those were, were really excellent. tasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that? I don't 
know. It's telling me something. We just got an alert on our watches. Oh, it's telling me it's time to go. 15 minutes. So I will take you guys with us to our tequila tasting. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Are you by yourself? I am. It looks like we've got two shots of tequila, three cocktails, orange, cinnamon, and water. Nice. Hi. Howdy. Do we look a little like we've had some tequila because we've had some tequila? Or we've. I look like I've been swimming the canal. Well, you we did, did that, that too. too. Yeah. So our tequila margarita tasting was fantastic. We had two not full shots, but shot glasses that were more than halfway full of tequila. We did the Codigo Rosa, uh -huh. the pink one. Yep. And then we did Casamigos Reposado. Reposado. And then we had three mini margaritas. We did the Maya margarita, which had passion juice in it. Lime juice. It was very tasty. Vanilla. Mm -hmm. Agave. Mm -hmm. He said usually, like, I guess it's from the Four Seasons in Mexico City. And there, when they serve it, they serve it with, like, a chili flake. But only the Four Seasons Hotel in Mexico City has those chili flakes. No one else can have them. So you can only have the correct Maya Margarita at that place. At that, but it was still seasons. good. It was still good. It was very tasty. The second one we had was a tamarind margarita, and it was spicy and yeah. tart. I liked it. Tamarind is not my favorite, mostly because of the color. It's just not an appetizing like color, <laughs> but it tastes so good. And then the third one we had was the horchata margarita that, that he makes. Special. He makes himself. He steeps the rice milk with cinnamon sticks overnight, and then he mixes it with tequila and white Godiva chocolate oh, liqueur. It's very good. Yum. And then at the end, get your sweatshirt. Oh. At the end of the beverage seminar, Mom is walking around today with her sweatshirt that looks like mine, and she's having people sign it. But since Mickey and his pals aren't doing signatures on this cruise, we're having the cast and crew or she's having the cast and crew sign her sweatshirt to commemorate the cruise. So she's got all these different cast and crew signing her sweatshirt and she nearly made a couple of people cry today because she's asking them to sign her sweatshirt. I think it's really neat. What a cool idea. So it's like a take home souvenir and a lot of the people that were um, all guests that were in our tequila seminar thought it was really cool. That's beautiful penmanship. I know. Look at this one. Isn't that pretty? I think it's so pretty. But I think it's sweet. In, a lot, but Indonesia and India, Bali, the Philippines, mm -hmm. uh, Peru. Yeah. Yeah. Trinidad, Lots of Philippines, Tobago, Croatia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really cool. So that's one of her things and her one of her talents is making people feel special to the point where she almost brings them to tears <laughs> so we've decided we're nearly or well it's nearly three o'clock we've decided we're hungry so we're gonna go up back up to the pool deck uh -huh. and find something to eat because we're hungry and it's like three hours till dinner I am not gonna make it until dinner so we're gonna go eat well I demolished my cheeseburger Mom got what looks like a tomato chicken, chicken tomato mozzarella panini panini from Daisy's Delights and we refilled our pineapple. Now I didn't really understand what what the deal was with the pineapple this morning when we bought it. But when I refilled it what I understood was the first time you buy the pineapple and the drink that goes in the pineapple. The second time you pay for the rum only. So when you refill this, they will give you a drink and they only charge you for the rum. So that was really kind of a neat deal and it was really fast. I'm up on deck 10 now. I don't even know if you can hear me because it's so windy. We are now in the Atlantic Ocean. We have left Panama behind and I think this is the end of the anchorage over here. You can see all the ships waiting. And you can see all the rain over that way.
I think the time has come to say goodbye to our pineapple friend. Goodbye, pineapple friend. Goodbye, pineapple friend. You've been a great friend. You kept our drinks cold and you were very tasty. We came back to the room because um, I'm tired of getting beat to death by the wind. It is so windy out there. There is a storm moving in, closing in upon us. And when we came back to the room, after our mid-afternoon snack, we had three of these swam through the Panama Canal certificates. So mom's gonna put our names on a couple of them, but I don't know why we have three of them. Look at that, I did it. And I actually swam through the canal. So many of those people were just walking through the pool and you swam too, didn't you? I did, I dove under and swam. swam. Yeah, nice. So we got ready for dinner. We've had some pictures taken. And now we're in the atrium looking at Princess Belle and Princess Tiana and the tree and listening to some beautiful live music. Ooh, we've got mood lighting. We got a few more pictures taken and now we're gonna walk to the back of the ship and up to animators for dinner. Look at the blue ocean. Yeah. The blue tonight. The beautiful bride we are now on the Atlantic side. This is the Atlantic Ocean, everybody. We have actual menus tonight for our Panama Canal menu. See. Cheese and bacon tart with an onion sauce. And mom got the smoked salmon Napoleon. This is the cream of cauliflower soup with almonds. Mom got the salad with the blue cheese dressing. Very pretty. For the main course, I got the African curry spiced tofu with rice. And over here, there's a lobster tail. Mom got the prime rib. And it looks yummy. It does look really yummy. For dessert, I got the sundae with butter pecan ice cream. And those are the warm churros. We were given a puzzle to do a dinner and we finding it difficult to put back together. <laughs> we got it, but it took us a while. A little bit longer than it probably should have, right, Mom? <laughs> we finished dinner, and now we're in the atrium with Rapunzel and Ariel. Oh, it looks so pretty. Oh. That's pretty cute. That is cute. I like his ears. I think your sweatshirt's pretty cute, Mom. Thanks. And then your cute little rollaway bed. <laughs> I'm kidding. Is it helping? Is it helping your back? Yeah, my back is great. I'm glad. So, quick trip back to the room. I'm grabbing a book. She's changed her shirt. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go to Cove Cafe and sit for a while and read. And I'm gonna read because I'm only on chapter eight. <sighs> I'm never gonna make it through this book. Came into Cove Cafe to kind of sit and read some, and I'm reading The Lord of the Rings, moving into chapter nine. I'm making progress, and there's no one else in here with us. Just us. Mom's reading her old person magazine. <laughs> with my old person glasses. Featuring articles such as how to hide your house from Google, and how to make your Android or your iPhone a magnifying glass. And also, what was the other one? Um, coffee? It was about coffee? Yeah. yeah the and the different kinds of coffee. And the plus what you should drink pot. to save money and what you should drink yeah. to become a hipster. French press versus pods or pour over or cold brew or drip. Yeah. Anyway, we're having a good time. A peaceful evening. 
You can tell we're moving again. Look at the water in the pool. Woo! Hi! We're happy evening. Happy evening. It It's bedtime. She's in her pajamas. I'm about to get in my pajamas. We spent almost an hour sitting up in Cove Cafe reading. Yeah. I think I'm in chapter 10 now of the Lord of the Rings. I'm really enjoying reading it again. I love that story so much. This is not what I really want to talk about right now. Okay. I want to talk about how wonderful today was. I really enjoyed it. I had such it a good day. It was so beautiful. The weather was perfect and going through the canal was really smooth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only thing missing was the narrator. Captain Puckett was mm -hmm. missing for me and only because I know what it's like when he's on the ship and so for someone who's never done it before I don't want to tell you that it's not worth it it's still so much fun you get so much time on the ship it's an engineering marvel but you really should do a little homework before you come because I think yeah, you're gonna get a lot a, more out buy a book or two and read it either on the cruise or before you go do a little research, do a little homework before you go because, I mean, if they're not going to have, and this might, I hate to say a COVID thing, this might be a COVID thing, and maybe they don't have a narrator on the ship for this one sailing. I don't know. Maybe they'll never have anybody ever again. I have no idea. We didn't know before we came. We also didn't know that deck four was going to be closed off today, and mm -hmm. deck four was closed off all day long. I got the impression that was a COVID thing. I wish we would have been told that yesterday because we weren't mm -hmm. given prayer warning like nobody knew. It wasn't part of the morning show on the TV. They could have mentioned that in that show that by deck day. four will be off limits all day long. Like it just kind of took us by surprise and we weren't the only ones because mm -hmm. there were some other people trying to get off, trying to get out onto deck four yeah. because deck nine, ten we're kind of crowded in places and we wanted to see a different perspective from deck four mm -hmm. with fewer people because deck four in some places you're at ground level right yeah it's different anyway so it's, it's a different perspective if you had a veranda room you would have gotten a similar perspective mm -hmm. but whatever it's fine so um I still, I had a great time today. I thought it was so cool. Mm -hmm. The old locks were designed by Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. The can, old gates. Can you beat that for, you know, like the cool factor? No. But the new locks are so wide. I think they said that they're 33 feet wide. Yeah. They're wide enough that a car can drive across them. That's really cool. That's impressive. So when there's a ship in the locks and the gates are closed, they're actually using the gates that are like holding the water in and allowing mm -hmm. the ship to go up. They're using those gates as a road, which is just kind of cool. Yeah. So now we're watching some college football because it is Saturday night. Oh, I also wanted to mention there was no internet, no TV while we were, while we were in Panama today. We lost everything. They cut us off, which is fine. Except it's Saturday and it's college football. It's college game day, you know. Now so if you care have, about that, we had some internet. We, uh, yeah, but it was lim very limited. The free like guest Wi-Fi worked, so mm -hmm. the app worked. Mm -hmm. Anyway, tomorrow we're in Cartagena, and I don't plan on getting off the ship. I'm afraid. And they I'm, still have quite a few uh, tours. Lots and lots of port adventures still available, available as of tells yesterday. Me quite a few people are not getting off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen Romancing the Stone too many times <laughs> and I am afraid. Yeah. So I'm not going to get off and I'm not ashamed to say that I'm not going to get off. I just don't want to. Mm -hmm. So we're going to spend tomorrow on the ship. As a sea day. Yeah, we're going to make it our own sea day. It'll be fun. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be it from us for our Panama Canal Day. Any last words? No, I have no last words. Okay. Well, you guys will see us tomorrow in our next cruise vlog video. Good night. Good night.